hello and welcome to this demo so in this demo we would be looking more about uh, stored procedures so stored procedures are basic objects that are stored within your database so you could imagine that as a block of statements sql statements that are saved within your database as objects right so the advantages of using stored procedures are uh, number one they are compiled you know when it is run for the first time that is executed by the for the very first time and um, the execution plan is created right and um, when it is run at a later stage this execution plan is cached and the cached execution plan is actually utilized the other advantages are of course you could um, um, actually give some rights over your stored procedures execute rights and so on and so forth also the calling application need to call only the stored procedures so will have significant advantage over the bandwidth utilization all also you could return only the number of rows uh, which your query returns so accordingly you could design your stored procedures to um, mod modify according to the needs and requirements uh, of your application so to know more about stored procedures uh, let us just quickly fire our management studio so i have management studio open over here so let us just first look at the system stored procedures I'll just open any of the system databases and if you see over here inside programmability programmability um, you could see system stored procedures so as a convention all system stored procedures are prefixed the name SYS and followed by the stored procedure name so we would be using the adventure works database in our demos <coughs> So if you go to your stored procedures folder and right click on stored procedures, you'd find an option called as new stored procedure. So this actually creates a sort of framework for you. So you could fill in these details over here as to the your stored procedure name, your variable name and so on and so forth. The second alternative would be to use the template explorer. So here you'll have a stored procedure folder in which you'll have number of templates that are already available for example say create procedure basic template I just delete this one and drag and drop this one so this basically creates a sort of a framework for you and you could easily go to your query option and specify values for template parameters and it lists down all the places where you need to fill in the details so these are pretty much simple steps that you would be following in order to create a very basic stored procedure but what we would be looking at here right now is um, we'll create some very simple stored procedures we'll write some queries and i'll look at how to write some complex stored procedures how to use the return method how to use the output parameters uh, how to create parameterized stored procedures and so on and so forth so i'll just um, close this one and i'll create a new query so what i'm going to do right now is um, i'm going to create a very simple stored procedure which is going which has nothing but a simple select statement so i'll be using the adventure works database so i'll write adventure works click on go and now i'll be creating my stored procedure so the creation is pretty much simple you use a keyword create procedure followed by a procedure name so I'm going to call this as simple procedure or simple proc as and um, let me just write something like set no count on so I'll be coming back to this we'll look at the differences and I'm going to write a very simple select query select star from let me just choose some table say um, <clears throat> what should I choose 
I'll choose currency let me see what all data we have so right we can choose this one so I'll say select star from currency so this is a very simple procedure I have I'm going to execute this and if you refresh your stored procedures folder you would see this particular stored procedure being created you could use the execute statement followed by your stored procedure name and if you just run the stored procedure it is going to execute that stored procedure and return you the appropriate results right you could also use some shortcuts like say could write create proc simple proc one and here I'm going to set it to off and I'm going to create this stored procedure so if you refresh this you'll find the stored procedure is created the other shortcut would be to use exec simple proc one right so your simple proc one store procedure is executed and these are the results that are written now if you notice in the two store procedures that I created the first one I set the no count to on and the other one to off so let me just run the first one in which I set the no count to off on I'm sorry if I look at messages I see that uh, the number of rows that were actually executed are not returned right. so some of the calling applications treat this as a separate data in their data set so if you have the no count set to on the number of rows that are actually touched upon are not returned for example if you run the second stored procedure in which you have set the no count to off you would find such a message 105 rows affected so that is the basic differences um, between the two which I wanted to show you you could of course parameterize your stored procedures let us just look at some parameterized stored procedures so the syntax remains pretty much the same you say create procedure I'm going to use a short form for now create proc I'm going to use param underscore sp the name that I'm going to give and it's a good practice to set no count to off I'm sorry on and I have to declare my variable over here so let me just say call it as var followed by the data type as var car of 50 right. so I will be using the same select query select star from what was the query sales currency right but here I'm going to give a condition where say currency code and I'm going to supply this value via that parameter so I've created a stored procedure I'll just refresh the stored procedures folder I'd see that param sp is created so now if I just execute this, I'll use a short form param underscore sp and I'll pass in the variable name to say aed I should be getting exactly one result alright the other alternative would be of course to pass it something like this underscore sp followed by the parameter value so you need not specify the parameter name as in dot var but directly specify the parameter value so that would also return you the same result but one thing to actually note over here is if you are having a number of parameters make sure you pass the values in the same order itself right um, 
now there may be cases where you might not pass any parameters now if I don't do that I'll be getting an error so at certain cases I might need to pass in some default values for example I could say this equal to AED right so if I don't pass in any value it is going to take that value mm, looks like oh I need to rebuild the stored procedure so I'll just delete this one and I'll just execute this now if I just run this it is going to take the default value and if I pass some value to this say do we have something called as all anyways we have something called as Bob so if I pass in Bob it is going to return me the value of the parameter value that I just passed so apart from parameterized stored procedures um, you could also use some output parameters right so the syntax again pretty much remains the same you say to create a stored procedure we call this as output underscore sp and now I need to again define my output variable I'll define it as var and var car of 50 and I'm going to tell that this is my output variable okay so I need to put something to this output variable so that when the function is called I could actually get some value out of this particular variable so let me do something pretty much simple say I'm going to set this var equal to say use the same select query itself select but this time I could use something like um, name say only the top of one I'll take the top of one name from sales dot currency right so it is going to return me one particular name and it's going to set it in this variable and that happens to be my output variable let me just execute this and uh, I need to execute this particular stored procedure alright so first and foremost I'll just declare a temporary variable called as output result and after that I'll be executing this particular stored procedure of underscore SP and I'll just store whatever it results as output results into this variable and I'll just select the same so what this is going to do is it's going to execute the stored procedure which I just made and my temporary variable it is going to store the result that the stored procedure returns to me um, looks like I screwed up somewhere mm. oh forgot the data type okay so it has outputted the it has output me the value that has been selected through this query right similarly you could also return some values right. so I'll just create a stored procedure called as return underscore sp and I'll directly return say something very 150 right I'll create this stored procedure 
and let me just refresh this folder and I could see this so <clears throat> I need to execute this stored procedure so I'll use the exec followed by return underscore sd so it is going to return me some value so I need to catch that value in particular variable so I'll just declare a variable call this as return var and say int and whatever my store price are returns I'm going to store it in this and I'm going to select the same let me see how it works so it has returned 150 so 150 was stored here and I've selected 150 many times during debugging you might want to print some results ad hoc results like this so there is a keyword over here called as print you could write print hello world and it's going to return hello world so if you have a very big block of um, stored procedure and you want to know what is the value that has been um, you know selected in between so you could actually for example say instead of select I could write something like this just comment this out and let's see how this works so it has returned me the value so these are some basic steps that you could take while debugging your stored procedures